Hello trendsetters and welcome to Find the Trend. My name is David and this here is Mike. Wow, Bitcoin is at $32,000? That's over a 10,000% growth. But it's been a wild ride. I've seen it crash as much as 85%. So what really is Bitcoin? Is it too late to invest now? What if it crashes again? I got all these crazy questions. So yeah, Bitcoin is uh, the leading digital currency, actually the world's first digital currency, otherwise known as cryptocurrency. And I won't really go into details of how exactly it works, but all you need to know is that Bitcoin is mathematically limited to 21,000, 21 million, sorry, digital coins. Um, and a lot of institutions are using Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. And actually for savers like you and I, perhaps, or investors like you and I, it makes more sense in the long run than necessarily like putting it into a bank account um, because you only get a little bit of money and that won't keep up with inflation. Ah, okay, great. Now Bitcoin makes a little bit more sense to me, but it's gone up so much in value. Should I buy Bitcoin now? Yeah, so there's been a lot of high profile companies such as insurance companies, uh, JP Morgan, Square, uh, PayPal, Amazon, Google, uh, even Apple um, are, are rumored to be adding it as part of their payment platforms. So it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, right here from this article, you, you, know, you can see MicroStrategy, Grayscale, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, uh, all of them are really buying Bitcoin. Um, even even BlackRock downgraded U.S. Treasuries, which is basically how institutions buy uh, cash. Essentially, they don't actually hold cash; they hold U.S. Treasury bonds. And so, when they when this BlackRock downgraded it, and by the way, BlackRock um, they they manage 8.6 trillion assets, so that's that's a hefty sum. It's essentially on par with the entire market cap of of the gold. Um, so it's, it's huge. And actually, it's, it's even more significant uh, because one of their advisors hinted that it could actually replace gold, which is, which is also worth $9 trillion. So this makes Bitcoin's market cap you know, of $700 million, a really small fish and a really large pond, <laughs> considering it's competing with the world's fiat currencies and commodities like gold. Nice, nice. You've convinced me. Now I want to invest. This is exciting technology, but do I need to worry about it potentially crashing yet again? Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously has the potential, you know, to, to have market corrections and crashes. It just really kind of depends on what you want to do when you cash out your investment because it's definitely volatile and it's not clear necessarily like, oh, are, are you going to put that into stocks? Well, not everyone's willing are you going to put that into savings? Not everyone's willing to have that money tied up for an extended period of time, right? Um, but Bitcoin's like strongest argument that it's the store of value, right? Like in like gold, it's not necessarily going to crash 85%. And it's probably unlikely to crash 85% because of institutions that have already bought into it. Um, you know, especially if JP Morgan and BlackRock and Goldman Sachs are going to, they're basically part of the US economy at this point, like the government is going to bail them out. So it's, it's not going to crash 85%. Um, you know, but at the same time, you, you probably don't want to invest everything in it just because it could dip. And you might suddenly need the money and you have to sell at a really bad time, right? Uh, and, and Bitcoin's market cap is pretty small compared to gold or the US dollar. So it, hasn't been something that people take seriously yet in terms of replacing those stores of value, right? But at the same time, like gold or the dollar, Bitcoin gets safer the more people hold it. So unlike a stock where the more people hold it, the worse the returns are, we actually have the opposite, where if the more people hold it, the more confident people are about this holding value. And we actually have news that institutions are buying it as well, obviously, as we saw earlier. So, and they'll most likely continue to buy it in the future. Also, inflation is a potential risk. I mean, it's, it's not a risk right now, but it could be a risk in the future because we're printing so much money. Got it. 
Now, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. So why invest in Bitcoin and not other cryptocurrencies? What other alternatives are out there? Yeah, so that's, that's such a great question. Um, as the other currencies aren't really in wide circulation or they're not really well known. They also don't really have first mover advantage. And most of them don't really have a limit on coins. Uh, the biggest alternative to the Bitcoin is currently Ethereum, which is still really expensive. I think last time I checked is around um, like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars, and so it's still really quite expensive. It doesn't really have any major institutions buying it, which is a really big problem if we want to invest in a currency that has you know a lot of financial support behind it. So should I invest in the stock market or Bitcoin? I mean, I think both have advantages. I don't think necessarily one is better than the other. Like the stock market is great for investing in certain companies because like certain companies like Tesla or uh, Square, they, they do industries, they're doing very well. Bitcoin is more like investing in gold or like a type of currency. Um, it's, it's different because it's influenced on a market scale rather than an individual company earnings scale on that front like i do think like bitcoin dough will be a viable competitor to gold which already would make it like worth um five hundred thousand dollars per coin uh, which would make it 10 times what it's currently worth over 10 times what it's currently worth and could do even better than that and actually you start to replace the dollar or as a currency or even as payments could go even higher because at that point it, it really does have a store of value. Wow, pretty crazy potential for sure. So what actually happened the other day, like last week, I actually saw Bitcoin drop from like 40,000 all the way to 30,000 overnight. Like that was crazy, <laughs> what was going on? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, Bitcoin still can be mined. So the, there's there's this concept of mining in cryptocurrency, which is sort of like printing money, essentially. The, and the reason why you want to do this is because it's, it's just like the normal money supply, like a little bit of inflation is good so that uh, you, you encourage people to keep creating or keep spending um, and not hoard it, right? Um, Bitcoin can be still mined, but at the same time, this this inflation will eventually stop. So it will stop at like 2140. Um, and there's a really low inflation, like 2% or so. And actually that's mathematically determined by uh, Bitcoin. So, and it, it had halves every so often, um, every four years, I believe. Um, so it's, the inflation rate constantly keeps going down, but you have no such guarantee of that with, say, the US dollar, for example. Like you have no guarantee that um, the Federal Reserve, which is our federal bank, right, uh, our national bank, will be able to guarantee that inflation will be this amount. That, that just won't happen. And so it's like a really great uh, confidence booster, essentially, for the market. Um, also, yeah, the, the, so just to go back on your question about the Bitcoin dropping, there's a couple of different events that happen. Like uh, there was one weekend where miners dropped a bunch of Bitcoin over the weekend onto the market. And since institutions are closed on the weekend, which makes sense because they don't trade. They trade only on the stock market normally. They don't buy on the weekend. So essentially that's kind of like a flash crash because there's very little demand for these. If you offload a sun supply, all of a sudden, okay, there's a flash crash. But you can see like after the weekend happened, it, it, it went right back up. Yeah, you know, and then there's another correction that happened much more recently when Biden's charged Secretary um, of Treasury, Janet Yellen, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, said that the US will clamp down on cryptocurrency. Really, only a few days later, even like she changed her tunes and said that Bitcoin had like some potential benefits for the financial sector. But like if you panicked and sold like during that time and just like listened to the rumor mill, you, then you would have clearly regretted that, that decision just because of short-term volatility. Mm -hmm. 
So how do you start to invest in Bitcoin? I mean, if a Bitcoin is worth, what, $32,000 per Bitcoin, do I need that much money to start buying my first Bitcoin? No, I think Bitcoin is really accessible to invest in, unlike a stock where you have to buy one share. I mean, even though there are ways to buy uh, partial shares in a company, there's not many people that want to do it or like it's, it's just not like psychologically it's not very enticing um but it makes more sense for like you know currency because like we have like denominations like a penny of a dollar or something right um so it makes much sen more sense to buy a partial coin of bitcoin because it can be divided into a really small amount and and people are psychologically already okay with that and and if it actually goes to five hundred thousand dollars a coin which is what uh, for example, ARK Invest believes as well. Even if you have a partial amount, it still ends up being a very large sum of money. If you want something that is uh, not necessarily Bitcoin, but still within the stock market, I mean, I'd, I'd invest in um, Bitcoining mining companies like Riot or companies like that buy Bitcoin like MicroStrategy or even Square. There's also another reasons why you might want to buy stocks instead of Bitcoin directly, which is if you have accounts like retirement accounts, <clears throat> which cannot normally buy Bitcoin, they can only buy stocks or ETFs or mutual funds. So buying shares in those kinds of companies will actually allow you to take advantage of that pricing trend while still being relatively early in the game. Ah, thank you, Mike, for helping me and also everyone else watching to understand about Bitcoin. You can also invest in Bitcoin directly using Robinhood, Coinbase, or Square's Cash App, and referral links are down below. What do you guys think about Bitcoin? Have you invested in Bitcoin? Do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea to invest in Bitcoin? Let us know in the comments down below. We read and reply to every comment. With that being said, thank you everyone for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and keep following the trend. We'll see you guys next time.